really happy and excited to have been invited to work with Broken Sleep Books and, and loved what Aaron was doing and, and what I didn't necessarily know but was really grateful to kind of find out subsequently to being published by Broken Sleep was the kind of breadth and extent of um, space that Broken Sleep was making in, in the poetry world where it feels like its own for want of a better word, family, because I mean, family is kind of a bad word. Most people don't like families, but um, there's a kind of broken sleep family and it's very nonpartisan and, and open for all kinds of different poetry, which is really refreshing in the poetry world. So I'm happy to be here as a part of that. I'm just going to read three poems. It's probably going to be less than 10 minutes, but I was just thinking about it before I came on the zoom and um it's a kind of punk thing i think for me you know just just go go for it go short sharp burst of what you want to do and then you know people take it or leave it um i also really respect poets that do the opposite of reading continuously um i think bernadette meyer does that just reads for hours and hours and hours I respect that, but it's not really my thing. So this first poem is from the book and the subsequent two are not. It's called Clown Town Three. Poems are so embarrassing or when you have no money, dress your little lambs as gremlins and take them to the job center to get fake gremlin jobs not meant for lambs. And the muse, muse says, get your shit out my fucking business buddy. And your fake gremlin lambs will have fake gremlin lamb babies and you can cream off their wages and benefits, the milk and honey of the DWP. It's like being stuck with your bad thoughts, plucking a lone liar, sticking your head in a fire, eating marshmallows out your asshole, inscribed on a big stick that it keeps bashing you with in public, like, oh, those my, there's my bad thoughts again. I am the poetry boss because I am embarrassing. I am the embarrassing mob boss of poetry, gorging myself to death at that nice restaurant atop Mount Parnassus on that fancy expensive food, cooked angel livers and devil's gold. And I can't even read the menu because it's in ancient Greek. I keep clicking my fingers at all the waiters, their cloven hooves clop clopping, cussing me out in ancient Greek. I point at the menu. I'll have some more of that, um, how do you say, poetic inspiration, please. Like, so I took you to Clown Town and I was incredibly excited to take you there. I even wrote about it in my diary, but I had a bad dream, an anxiety dream, a dream in which I was very, very anxious while I was crying in the crystal shop. I don't know why, I just started crying and then I couldn't stop, you laughed at me. It's the matter that keeps dragging you back through hell. So I took you to Clown Town and I did cry in the crystal shop, the shop with the crystals, and I put it in a poem. It's the matter that keeps dragging you back through hell. And next two poems that are not in the book. This one's called, Oh, Here's the Crisis. And I wrote it just over a year ago. Oh, here's the crisis. Well, here we all are, still crashing into the terrible economy of each other, singing all the old songs again, which I love, like, oh, here comes the crisis, the one that never left, like, hello sun, hello sky, hello moon, hello stars. Is there any life on your cruise liners, any space left in your panic rooms, a little cabin on your islands, perhaps a nook in your bunker, the one you purchased earlier, well in advance of the catastrophe, a little smidgen left for me, perhaps, and of course, the rest of the proletariat. All your restaurants are closed and all your boutiques and showrooms too, which must be so hard, I guess. But perhaps it is a little worse for the workers who dust the hallways and take out your bloodied mounds of history's recompense. Then 
There's your silk rags, your yachts, your finest mechanical watches, your mounds of actual gold locked away, and your newspapers that you own that will hopefully collapse because it is entirely what you deserve, even though we know where the weight will fall first in the collapses to come, which is just a little song to say in as clear a voice as I can muster. Well, here we all are, crashing into the economy of each other, end to end, head to toe. Oh look, here comes the crisis again, the one that never left, but oh, the first can be last if the last will it, because we know, we know, we know on what other courses the collapses go. And then, last. This is a poem I wrote a couple of months ago called, We Will Have a Party. We will have a party. It will be a really big party. We will invite as many people as we want. We will invite the nurses and the ambulance drivers and the cleaners and maybe even the doctors if they promise to behave. We will invite the road sweepers and the delivery drivers and the care workers and maybe even the builders if they promise to be good vibes. You'll invite your mum and your dad and your auntie. They might not come, but they'll be pleased you asked. We will have a party. It will be in a forest somewhere in a clearing and there'll be enough space for everyone. If we bring drink and you bring drink, we can share drink for everyone who wants one. Everyone will want some sort of drink. It'll be a blisteringly sunny day. We'll bring snacks and cold drinks and damp towels for your forehead. There'll be flowers everywhere and many ice buckets. People will pick the flowers and make them into garlands. You can wear one if you want. There'll be enough shade from the hot sun and we can lie in the shade and chat. There'll be music played through a huge rig. It'll be slowly pounding music, music that gives you space. You will grind, your muscles tense and loosen, the bass will shimmer and the beats will pulse, throwing all those tensions out your body. You will get loose, you'll be loosened, will feel relaxed. You won't think about work or words or worlds, just make them. Strangers will chat to you and you will feel loved. We will have a party, a very big party. We will invite everyone except the police. Tout le monde déteste la police. Police will not be allowed, should never be allowed out our lives. We will have a party and we will invite everyone except Pretty Patel and anyone else who fails to understand why she is not invited. That will be the code for the party. We'll say, do you think Pretty Patel should be allowed? And everyone will say no or ha ha. And in the movement of our feet and the chatter of our mouths, we will break their laws. We will break them with the righteous happiness of our indignation. They will run in fear at the sight of our enjoyment, a change in the weather. We will have a party and a huge storm cloud will appear over Parliament Square. We will dance in the hot rains as the skies clatter above us. We won't care much about the rain because we'll be having a party. That's it. Thank you. Uh, and I look forward to hearing everyone.